Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about aortic stenosis. Aortic valve is a valve placed in uh, the outlet of the left ventricle. Through this valve, blood will go to the aortic uh, aorta and to the systemic circulation. Whenever this valve is stenosed, there will be pressure overload over left ventricle. That means normally the valve is uh, without any problem, it opens when there is a uh, uh, pressure from the left ventricle, valve opens that is uh, left ventricular systole, during that systole blood will go to the aorta and to the systemic circulation. But when the valve is tight, difficult to open, uh, when the systole, during the systole, blood will not be able to pass through this aortic valve to aorta uh, uh, without any uh, like uh, normal manner. So, the, com the pressure over the left ventricle increases. So, that means narrowed aortic valve that produces pressure overload over the uh, uh, left ventricle that produces left ventricular hypertrophy and later it will produce dilatation. The most common cause for uh, aortic stenosis will be a congenital disorder that is bicuspid aortic valve that occurs mainly in young patients or in patient who is having isolated uh, aortic stenosis. This is the common cause. But whereas other when other valves like mitral valve is involved, the common cause for aortic stenosis is rheumatic heart disease. Then in old age, it is due to degenerative atherosclerotic or sclerotic aortic valve that is the common cause for old age. So, degenerative or atherosclerotic aortic valve that occurs in elderly individual. So, the common causes are bicuspid aortic valve in younger individuals and when AS occurs isolated uh, AS. Uh, when other valves are involved then it is mostly due to rheumatic heart disease. Elderly individuals it is mostly due to atherosclerotic or degenerative heart disease. Now, the most common cause for aortic uh, stenosis and most common congenital heart disease is always bicuspid aortic valve disease. Most of the time these patients may not have any symptoms, but rarely this bicuspid aortic valve can develop or go for aortic stenosis. So, that is one of the common cause for AS or AR, but when this AS or AR occurs due to bicuspid aortic valve normally other valves are not involved whereas in rheumatic heart disease mostly mitral valve also will be involved. Now symptoms of aortic valve in patients who is having aortic stenosis due to acquired aortic stenosis the symptoms occurs very late but whereas in uh, conditions like repeated uh, rheumatic heart disease like repeated attacks of rheumatic heart disease the symptoms can even occur in early age group itself. Angina occurs, dyspnea on exertion, syncope especially post exercise syncope, dizziness, sudden cardiac death, all these things are most common causes for aortic stenosis. Now, why these patients develop dyspnea, syncope, angina, they are very important. Dyspnea occurs due to uh, uh, mainly due to left ventricular systolic function is uh, uh, reduced or it is uh, abnormal because of the aortic stenosis that can produce uh, some amount of uh, reduced systemic circulation back pressure on the left atrium and ultimately it may lead to pulmonary edema also. So, reduced systemic circulation can produce uh, uh, weakness, lethargy all these things back pressure to left atrium and pulmonary circulation will produce breathlessness. Syncope, it is due to the reduced circulation to uh, systemic uh, through the iota or reduced stroke volume because of the fixed cardiac output, especially when the patient doing some exercise. Mo normally when there is an uh, exertion, uh, the uh, uh, cardiac output increases as a compensatory measure, but here it is always a fixed cardiac output whether you exert or not, the cardiac output is always fixed due to the uh, fixed type of aortic valve. So, uh, that produces syncope mostly after exercise. 
and China, it is due to uh, the uh, demand supply mismatch because we can see that um, uh, when there is aortic stenosis, left ventricular hypertrophy occurs and because of this hypertrophy, demand increases but the circulation is same as oh, coronary arteries are same. So, the demand supply mismatch will produce angina. So, these are the causes for uh, dyspnea, syncope and angina that these, these three things are the most common findings in aortic stenosis. Now, other clinical findings like on examination you can see low, slow rising, low volume pulse, we will see what it is. BP, low systolic BP, this is called as systolic decapitation that is due to fixed and low cardiac output. Heaving type of apical impulse that is due to uh, enlarged left ventricle due to left ventricular hypertrophy. Heaving means when we are palpating the apical impulse, you can see the uh, fingers are lifted up and sustained that is heaving apical impulse. Carotid thrill can be present because there is aortic stenosis. This, uh, this palpable murmur can even radiate to the carotid area. Soft second heart sound that is because the aortic valve does not uh, uh, close properly because of aortic stenosis. Um, so, that produces soft second heart sound. Now, pulses parvus et tardis or slow racing low volume pulse. Uh, that is very important here in aortic stenosis. Uh, so, pulses parvus is a small weak pulse. Pulses tartus is delayed systolic peak. Delayed systolic peak is a classical finding seen in aortic stenosis because uh, during left ventricular systole, uh, there will uh, some delay in the opening of the aortic valve because of stenosed, stenosed valve. So, it takes some delay in the systolic peak of, peak of pulse and pulse volume is always low because there is a fixed cardiac output because of the aortic stenosis. So, that together produces pulses parvus et tardus or low volume slow rising pulse. Now, once you see uh, the patient with aortic stenosis, you can get that low volume pulse, uh, systolic decapitation, apical impulse is heaving. On auscultation, you get a typical finding that is a harsh ejection systolic murmur in the aortic area with a thrill, with or without a thrill and the murmur and the thrill radiate to the carotid area also. Okay. So, S1 is normal because aortic uh, mitral area is normal in aortic stenosis. So, S1 can be normal. There is an ejection systolic murmur especially in the aortic area that radiates to the carotid. It can be associated with a thrill. S1 is soft because, because of this aortic stenosis during systole aortic valve opens with difficulty that produces low volume pulse. But at the end of the uh, systole normally aortic valve closes with a normal second heart sound. Here the aortic valve closure, closure is very slow and not rapid that is why the A2 is uh, very soft here. So, depending on the uh, 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 severity of the lesion, you can see here uh, the, uh, the sound of the murmur can be increased. So, aortic stenosis produces, uh, mild aortic stenosis produces very soft ejection systolic murmur, but in severe aortic stenosis, it produces very harsh ejection systolic murmur and even A2, P2 can be uh, altered here. Now, A2, P2 split occurs in aortic stenosis, you can see here, expiration, you can see inspiration and expiration, there is a difference and in aortic stenosis, there is a paradoxical splitting that means A2 occurs even after P2. So, that is reversal of uh, paradoxical split of A2 P2. So, in severe aortic stenosis and uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, uh, left bundle branch block, all these things, P2 occurs early to A2 that, that means A2 is completely delo delayed. So, that is a problem in aortic stenosis, but it will be very difficult to identify all these things clinically. Uh, if you record it properly, uh, uh, you can see all these findings. But ejection systolic murmur is very classical and soft A2 is also very classical in aortic stenosis. Now, aortic valve sclerosis occurs in elderly individual. So, normally when uh, uh, aortic sclerosis is entirely different from aortic stenosis, 
hepatic sclerosis means valve is closed uh, but there is no stenosis but what happens is when there is a systole normally uh, in a normal aortic valve there will be some flexibility that's why it will not produce any sound there but when the valve is rigid but it opens normally since it is rigid that produces a sound so uh, when there is a sclerotic aortic valve also you can get a ejection systolic murmur but there will not be alteration in pulse or bp so sclerotic aortic valve without stenosis pulse is normal or rather it can be increased that is because of the old age so sclerotic aortic valve pulse is normal or slightly increased and bp if we see that is a systolic decapitation in aortic stenosis will not occur here so sclerotic aortic valve is very important finding in elderly individual that actually produces a murmur but it is not aortic stenosis you can make out that because pulse is normal bp is normal or bp is rather high in this type of patients pulse is also having uh, falsely high volume because of the atherosclerosis so this problem will produce a condition or phenomenon called as galavadin's phenomenon galavadin's phenomenon is uh, 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 is normally you get in sclerotic aortic valve actually there is no lesion there only a sclerosis of the valve is there so you get a ejection systolic murmur in the aortic area and the vibration of the valve produces another sound but that sound is better heard in the mitral area so if you auscultate this patient you get two types of murmur there is a pan systolic murmur in the mitral area there is an ejection systolic murmur in the aortic area but if you examine this patient there is no heaving apical impulse there is no low volume pulse there is no systolic decapitation no other clinical finding but you are getting two important murmurs one is an ejection systolic murmur in the aortic area another one is a pan systolic murmur in the mitral area and patient is completely normal suppose this is due to a mitral regurgitation and aortic stenosis the findings may be very low volume pulse systolic decapitation and patient will be some completely symptomatic so asymptomatic patient who is having two different types of murmur that is galavadin's phenomenon it's a normal condition patient will be absolutely normal no need to worry about this patient's clinical condition now mostly uh, patient who is having aortic stenosis there will be pressure overload over the left ventricle slowly this pressure overload produces left ventricular hypertrophy initially there will not be any shift of the apical impulse but later when the ventricle enlarges you can get uh, shifting of apical impulse towards the left and out and down that produces heaving type of apical impulse because of the left ventricular inc- uh, muscle mass now esm ejection systolic murmur in the aortic area can be due to various condition like aortic stenosis hocm systemic hypertension aortic regurgitation itself can produce a flow aortic murmur pulmonary ejection systolic murmur mitral regurgitation can sometimes produce as a uh, uh, radiation of murmur from mitral area to the base of the heart so say so many conditions can produce ejection systolic murmur in the aortic area but to differentiate all these things from aortic stenosis it is very easy you see the peripheral pulse that is low volume pulse we see the systolic bp that is low systolic uh, bp and uh, a, a other condition like uh, heaving apical impulse all those things you can get in systemic hypertension and other condition also so it is very difficult to identify other conditions uh, like uh, hocm and all from uh, this uh, type of disease but low volume pulse systolic decapitation uh, ejection systolic murmur in the aortic area thrill in the aortic area all these things are typical features of aortic stenosis so this chart helps you to identify different causes for aortic stenosis that i am only reading the valvular aortic stenosis other things you have to uh, you can understand afterwards valvular aortic stenosis low volume pulse low systolic bp heaving apical impulse soft a2 ejection systolic murmur with thrill in the aortic area that is very classical whereas aortic sclerosis you can get all this uh, you won't get all this peripheral finding but you get only an ejection systolic murmur in the aortic area and because of the galavadin phenomena you can get a get even a pan systolic murmur in the mitral area so uh, that we have to understand 
Now, severity of AS uh, thrill in the aortic area, heaving apical limbals, A2 is delayed, that A2 P2 interval shortens, and sometimes it will be a reversal, that is, paradoxical split. Long and late peaking of systolic murmur, soft or absent A2, presence of S4, all these things are indicating the severity of aortic stenosis. Complications LV failure, left bundle branch block, complete heart block, arrhythmias, sudden cardiac death. All these things are the complications of aortic stenosis. And once you understand aortic stenosis, you have to some, uh, take some investigation like ECG will show the LVH or some arrhythmias. LBBB can be there. X-ray may show a left ventricular enlargement. Echo will tell you what is the uh, uh, aortic valve area. Mild, more than 1.5 cm square. Moderate, 1 to 1.5 uh, cm square. Uh, severe, 0.7 to 1 cm square. Critical is less than 7 cm square. So, echo will tell you uh, uh, what are the problems in the heart like left ventricular hypertrophy, uh, any mitral regurgitation is associated with that, what is a valve orifice. Then we have to always, any aortic stenosis or aortic regurgitation, we have to always look for angio to see whether any uh, involvement of the aortic, uh, sorry, uh, coronary circulation or not because uh, many a times uh, aortic stenosis may be, also since aortic valve, uh, the origin of the coronary arteries are near to aortic valve, many a times aortic uh, stenosis or aortic regurgitation can be associated with coronary artery disease also. So, angio is very, very important in all types of uh, aortic stenosis patients. Then once uh, uh, we diagnose aortic stenosis, calcified aortic stenosis, aortic regurgitation, aortic valve replacement is the tr treatment of choice. Surgical aortic valve replacement or transcatheter aortic valve, valve implantation that is TAVI are the only effective treatment of severe aortic stenosis. So coronary angiography is indicated in most of the patients who is having symptoms like uh, angina or any evidence for angina during evaluation, uh, all these things, angiogram also required. So, we have discussed about aortic stenosis, one of the most common uh, cardiac problem, especially in patients with rheumatic heart disease. Most of the time, aortic stenosis is associated with mitral regurgitation or mitral, regurgit mitral stenosis. But in patients with uh, uh, who is having bicuspid aortic valve, or Marfan syndrome, uh, isolated uh, aortic stenosis is also common, but they are not very, very uh, common comparing with uh, uh, rheumatic heart disease in our country. But uh, worldwide, uh, bicuspid aortic valve is very, very common. It's one of the most common congenital cardiac disorder, but most of these patients are normal without any problem. But these patients can develop aortic stenosis. In elderly individual, if the patient is having a aortic stenosis murmur, then you have to think about aortic sclerosis and some patients on echo finding, you can see aortic stenosis. If they are symptomatic, then we need to treat this patient. Many patients with aortic stenosis can come with severe breathlessness, angina or dyspnea on exertion to emergency room. So that also we have to take care. Breathlessness is mostly due to the uh, uh, back pressure to the left atrium and from the left atrium to the pulmonary circulation, pulmonary edema. Uh, the weakness is mostly due to reduced ejection fraction or fixed ejection fraction. Many patients develop post-exertional syncope in aortic stenosis. It may be very severe in HOCM. HOCM is not aortic stenosis. It's a subbiotic area obstruction, especially when the patient doing some exercise that is called as dynamic obstruction. So, HOCM also can produce post-exertional uh, syncope. Thank you.